saw a dual camera, they're doing the same thing. But in our comparison with the P9, like the Leica branding really does pull in a, like a lot more detail. There's a lot more kind of like texture in the black and white photos. Uh, the photos overall, I'd say like it's it's kind of back and forth, right? Like okay. this one did better, that one did better. So I kind of call it a wash. But if you do like taking black and white photography, there's mm. absolutely no contest because the the Honor 8 actually has like the P9 a live filter section. And so you can choose a monochrome mode in the live filter section. So I thought it's going to be the monochrome camera. It's completely not. It's not. It's just the filter. So the P9 really does have this like Leica advantage. Sure. Which no, no, no. I, I, I was pretty sure that they won't use this kind of Leica branded combination of cameras. Yeah, is but it, I is it a, at least something where you can, where you have this kind of uh, uh, depth? 3D. Yeah, so you do you get so just like the M8, you 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 do get that kind of, or even um, on 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 the Dell that Intel did, you kind of can choose afterwards to change the depth of field, and there's some really nice filters in it actually. Okay. So you can kind of like change the depth of field, reposition everything, and then they have some special filters that really do this nice ad like ad adaptation mm -hmm. with like dark and light. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually very very smart if you're into that kind of bouquet drama. I mean, it's a very dramatic and flashy phone already, right? If you want to get noticed, <laughs> you want to have the honor. Aid. I'm I was just kidding. I was because I was laughing my ass off when Wiley Khan we was were doing the booth. Too. In the break. This is a very flashy phone for someone who wants to get noticed. And it I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it is a flashy phone, though. It catches your eye and you're like, stop. It is beautiful. Right, it's beautiful. Seriously, it is so unbelievably beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> I just, no, I, I really it think it's, it, uh, the Honor 8 is probably the most beautiful phone of the year. I, I'll give it that, yeah. Uh, I mean, yes, we have these all metal phones. I'm getting this, right? And we have other glass phones. The Zenfone 3 in blue also looks great, also right? Also looks great. But I have to give it to Honor because their back is just like, I mean, it's just even. Yeah. Right, there are no cameras popping out. Yeah. Uh, also, the way they embedded the um, the fingerprint sensor, which also turns into a button, yeah. which is pretty cool. And yeah. you can you can um, add features or apps to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in overall, it just looks gorgeous. But and three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. But the thing the thing about this additional features on the button thing, they need did to. It get, did it get an award? The Honor Eight. Well, it w technically wasn't released at this show, so we didn't give it an award. Because um, it was it was it was released in San Francisco a few weeks ago, and then in Paris again. I that would be Indian. I would just <laughs> you would just wobble your head at me. <laughs> <laughs> but we did give uh, Huawei an award with the Nova for best b m mid range smartphone of the show because they 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 did announce here. Yeah. And in terms of others mid range smartphones, it was just the Chinese guys who have very little design. Actually, I think Nubia is coming on, but the Nubia Z11. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's it's very iter iterative from the Z11 Mini, okay. which I felt was iterative from their entire line, right? They have like one design language, like Sony, and they're just sticking with it, to be honest. So, not super keen on the kind of the look of that phone, even though it is it is fairly decent for the price. And then, the Axon Mini, yeah, which looks exactly like the Axon Seven, yeah, like exactly. Yeah. You have them side by side, and if you're not paying attention, you can't tell them apart. Well, but it's smaller. Yeah. Slightly. Slightly. So it's like right. a 5.2 yeah. to 5.5. Yeah. So it, like if it, you have like one in one hand over here, you can't It's quite can't, interesting that they made 5.2 5. inch devices now mini. Mini. When before that was like <laughs> massive. You remember when the Dell Venue was like five inches and we all made fun? Yeah. Oh, like the, everyone. The, the, the first Galaxy Note was 5.2 inches. Everyone was like, what? Whoa, how will you use this? No one's using this. Yeah. That's, That's the goddamn true. biggest smartphone market. The market of no one's. Steve Jobs actually said this. No one's going to buy a phone where you can't grab your fingers around. Sorry, Steve. It's the biggest market of the world. They really stuck around on that a long time. This is the best form factor for using it with one hand. How will you interact with life without your other hand? Yeah. <laughs> it's basically what yeah. he said. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what else was there? I mean, we saw the MateBook already during MWC. Well, I so still think it's an amazing... Uh, it's a very nice piece of uh, kit. It's a Core M. It's a Core M. It's a Core M. It's a Core M. 
It's a Coram. Um, <laughs> it really is a Coram, Nicole. Okay, so actually, why don't we just touch on this really briefly? We it, should. I mean, yeah. I mean, this year's the seventh generation of the Core M really improved. Right? Really improved. Yeah. Uh, it's hi- it's 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 a lot tighter. It's a it's a lot more optimized. You're getting like what thirty percent more power. Yeah. With the exact same battery life. But so here, but 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 here's the thing. I'm also, when I look at the, at the pricing of the MateBook, well, well, first of all, it's beautifully made. And um, I, I just love the features with the stylus and whatnot. And right? the fingerprint the, the, sensor the on the The fingerprint button. sensor Very on the nice. side is fantastic. I like that. Um, but when I look at the pricing, and when I also look what Acer is doing uh, with the Switch 12, mm. I was just blown away when I saw this for yeah. the first time. Plus, they're using a weird coi. Plus, they have this kind of weird all-in-one liquidish well they call it liquidish cooling but it's i mean it, it's a uh, it's basically what, what we have uh from corsair on our render machine right oh, okay so it's an, an integrated all-in-one closed system with the kind of liquid in there that is cooling the processor and i think acer did a fabulous job um also in terms of the pricing i think it starts at 699 mm. There's no competitor for it right now, so... So, let me get your take on this, because I've, I've been arguing a little bit with Stephen Avram online uh, about the new naming of the process. This, this might be really geeky, but at the same time, they bring up really good points, right? So there's the Y-series Core I, which is basically replacing the Core M processors, yeah. and then there's the real Core series. Right. Right. So... I mean, we've, we've already had Y-series in the past. Right. So, so, like, this is exactly what I'm exactly. saying. And, and everyone's just like, well, they're going to get confused. They're going to think that a Y-series you can do gaming on. Something that is, like, 11 millimeters <coughs> thick is something that you're not going to be able to do gaming on. I yeah. mean, like, like, let's just be realistic yeah. when you look at it. Yeah. Something that is, uh, like, this like this thin, you can barely see it. Yeah. And, you think, and, like, they, they think that consumers are going to get confused and think they're going to get a gaming machine. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think consumers either. are that I'm dumb. I'm going to sneeze again. Are you going to sneeze again? Yeah. <laughs> Stay over here. Don't I need to look, look at the light. Look at the light. Is it like smoke where you say, I, I love like baby almost bunnies? almost there. <laughs> don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. <laughs> All right, so the, um, the other thing that uh, I want to bring up about Acer, okay. uh, their Spin 7. This is a beautiful, beautiful notebook. I'm not into this convert. Even <laughs> I'm not into convertibles, and then I'm he using one them. over here. I know, right? I, but I'm not, I, I never use that functionality. I use it because I like to flip the keyboard back when I'm watching TV. Like, cause I like don't I want, do that. Cause I, I like it because it, it, it takes away the idea that I have to work. <laughs> wow. You flip it away, I, I, and then suddenly it's just a television. If there's a keyboard, all I think that's the first start to work. I've, I've never ever heard this before. That what? is something. No. You need to talk to these two in one uh, um, 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 manufacturers and marketing guys to tell them. Just flip away the business. Flip away the, <laughs> <laughs> flip away the business. Flip away the work. It's Convert just from work mode into leisure. Leisure. To be honest with you, I have some friends, some of them you know, who literally carry two laptops. Okay. Because who does that? Angelica. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> because, she was, to talk to her. because she wants one for work and one for pleasure. Right, <laughs> and I'm just like, make make literally make two accounts, one one like different backgrounds, different programs, but it's actually amazing that people can't think about separating like their work and their home on on one PC, which I try to do by flipping away the work. The work. Oh, that's so, that that is so amazing. <laughs> I can see this already being like a kind of claim. <laughs> For a future, for a future device, flip away the world. But you work. know what's really funny? So I still have a convertible with this one, the Microsoft Surface Book. Do you I am ever never detaching it. No one does it. Because no one does because it. Because I can't flip away the work. Exactly. I have to like the like like yeah. transformer, like detach. I, can I mean, the mechanism is, it. is amazing. It's amazing. But the you mechanism never use is amazing. It. I like that I can unlock it with my face. Right. I mean, it's cool. Oh, God. It's amazing. Oh God. <laughs> I can't 
it's, 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 good job, Nicole. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. But I'm literally never spinning it around to flip away the work. <laughs> this may be because you never did that. Yeah, I mean, I guess like that. Like that's the concept. You do it like this, and then you're just like, now I'm only watching television. Detach your work. Detach your work. No, I think I think flip away your work is okay. Because you can like flip off your work. Um, <laughs> let's go back to Acer. I think you, right. you, you you've been at their booth. And I, yeah, you did I, a little bit of a booth tour over there. And just so everyone on the stream knows, this is a little bit exclusive because Acer decided not to open their booth to the public this year. Ooh. Yeah, it's completely closed off. Yeah, so you can't go in, and the thing that you really want to check out is, is inside. Is inside? Well, because there's only like laptops behind glass outside. You can't. And guess what? You no, went inside. I went inside. So let's check out the the Acer booth tour. <laughs> Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks, and we're doing a booth tour at Acer. We're starting off with the Acer 21X, which is a curved display laptop. It has two GTX 1080 graphics cards. I think it's 2160 by 1080. We can show you some of the footage of the eye tracking in action. It actually is really crazy. Eight kilos, latest Core i7 processors, 64 gigabytes of RAM. The keyboard is backlit and absolute madness. This flips around, so it turns into a trackpad a number pad, and then a trackpad. Right, so that's really cool. It's got five fans, eight heat pipes, and we're gonna carry on with our booth tour because there's a big ass line to see this product. It's one of the most popular things here at the booth, but we're gonna check out some of their other gaming stuff. So we keep on walking over. Here's some of their more traditional desktops. Here's a curved display. So apparently Acer is all in on curved. Is it an all-in-one or is it just a monitor? Just a monitor. Just a monitor. All right, so it's not, it's not a, oh, but look at this. Okay, so this is the Predator line of desktops. It's something that I've noticed before, but they seem to have this really great kind of like, actually like the Predator, if you're old enough to remember that movie from the 80s, this is what is going on here. Now, it's got a GTX 980 processor in there. You have the option for AMD, which I am surprised at because you never see uh, AMD in anything. But let's get out of the gaming section. The Predator area is very threatening and very low power. We have this massive three display setup. It's absolutely enormous. Why don't I do a little bit of gaming on here? All right. Now I am a terrible driver. That's not true, I'm a really good driver. I'm terrible at left trigger. All right. <laughs> okay, let's back this. All right, so we got a three display monitor set up here. I am not good at driving. Apparently I'm going backwards on the track, but that's so I can crash for you and have a big accident and see how exciting that this is. And we're gonna carry on in the boot tour. <laughs> All right, so it's a way like lighter and more fun like living room experience out here. So we leave like the dark den of gaming back there, which is like the threatening predator line. And then we come into their booth, which is light and open. And over here, maybe we have some wood. If we want some wood, we, that, 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 that's here at the Acer booth. But we also see their, their massive lineup of tablets. Nothing really new here, but there's also their projectors. This would be their, one of their little all-in-ones. This is, this is a really big projector. <laughs> it kind of it reminds me of Hal. If you look inside there, there's like a, like your soul might get sucked in to this projector. Like that has to be for professional use, like absolute madness. So the Acer booth is lovely. There's some like nice seats. They're actually serving currywurst, which I may have to have because I'm in Germany, which I think is, yeah, it's the worst. I mean, I have all kinds of jokes you could make about that. We have some more of their all-in-ones all over here. The V15 Nitro, which is definitely a really nice laptop that I tried out for some video editing and I really enjoyed it. But where all the people are back here, this is kind of where all the good action is. This is where the stuff is that we had to like elbow in and wait in line and get some like nosebleeds happening in order to touch it. And we'll see if we can kind of grab one. We'll grab a spin seven. Yeah. So Acer's actually got an entire new lineup of spin products. So spin because it spins, right? It's pretty obvious. But at the same time, 
I like the Spin 7 a lot. I mean, there's the Spin 5, 3, there's, yeah. there's a whole line of them. But I like the Spin 7 because it's so thin. So we look at it, it is only, what is it, 10.98 millimeters. You check that out, that is a crazy thin profile. It feels really nice, the edges are really sharp. Like it's just all around a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful device. If we check out this side, we have two USB type C, which is really good. I mean, on devices this thin, like say like the MacBook or the ZenBook 3, we have only got one type C. I like having the two options because you can power one and then you can like transfer data with the other. Like if you have, like you, sometimes you have to like unplug something in order to transfer stuff. So I'm really happy that they have that. They have this great two hinge design. So if we look at that, right? So this first hinge, so pay, pay, pay attention now guys. This first hinge is the first one, and then this second hinge actually executes. So if we open that up, see that first hinge going, and then it hits here, and then the second hinge starts, right? And then back again, right? So it's actually a two hinge design, which is much more stable. It, it allows for the touch screen to be in play, so that when you have the, oh, <laughs> maybe you can't hold it like that though, but when you have the first hinge supporting it, you can use the touch screen and then it won't, it won't be as wobbly, right? So I, I really like the attention to detail in construction. Huge trackpad, like absolutely massive. Like maybe we're like, they want us to play the piano on that. It is enormous trackpad. Da -da 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 -da. But anyways, I mean like so, like maybe if you want to do like photo editing or like pinching and zooming is a thing that you do, it's big. I know I always point this out, but the shift keys are really nice and large. The feedback on the keyboard seems really nice. We're not seeing any flex on it at all, right? So like, I'll be honest with you, I haven't been that in tune with Acer products over the last year, because I wasn't that in love with their last lineup, but this Spin 7 has me sold. I'm back on board, I really want to check this out. Um, it's something that I really, really want to review. I just like the attention to detail. And there is, a, there is another product here that I want to get hands on with. Now I'm gonna see if I can if I can do that. If I can like get serious about stuff. I can't get serious about anything. I'm not, I'm not brave enough to steal it from anyone's hand. <laughs> so we're gonna come back when I have the notebook that I wanna show you. <laughs> Apparently we just had to wait like 30 seconds and then all of the all of them are free. We now, we now have all of the Swift Sevens. So the Swift 7 is currently the world's thinnest notebook. I know Lenovo has their yoga book and they're calling that a notebook, but let's be real, you need a physical keyboard to call it a notebook, right? So we are looking at 9.98 millimeters thin. This thing is bad boy thin, right? Close that up. Razor, razor, razor thin. I'm just gonna keep on spinning this around for you because the other side, legit, is the more interesting side because again, they continued the legacy with the two type C. Love that, right? So we have a really strong construction, same as the Spin 7, with really solid, nice, all metal design. The keyboard on this is great. We have the same massive trackpad. Like this is something that I really want to spend more time testing out. 1.12 kilos, nine hours of battery life support, supposedly the only downside is to it, because it's so thin, it's not really upgradable. We have a Core i5 Core i processor, seven gen core, so that, that's really good, but we can't go up to an i7. Maybe that's a heat sink thing. Oh, I just put my foot in the sand. There's sand down here. I just put my foot in it, that was a bit weird. All right, so talking about why I am continuously in love with this again is the fact that the 7th gen core processor, this is a fanless design, right? The Y series is really, really strong in terms of productivity, right? Getting something this thin, you usually had to make a lot of sacrifices, but maybe on extended render or extended gaming, we're not gonna see the numbers that we want, but in like my brief tests with the, with, with the i7, Y series, seven gen core, God, the naming is bad. Intel's not good at this stuff. But it's really something that you can rely on it if you want to run like multi, like multiple programs, say like Adobe Suite, Photoshop was running really killer on, on it. I haven't tested this one, can't wait to test it. Apparently it's won awards. Ugh, all right. So that was our kind of tour of the, of the Acer booth. You can see it's lovely in here. Now we're gonna head back to the show floor to check out some more stuff. Be sure to follow us by subscribing.
because you don't want to miss out on any more great IFA booth tours. Acer. Acer. That was the secret Acer booth. The secret Acer booth. And I like how they had that random bag of firewood. Just like just sitting around this <laughs> random bag of firewood. They had it all. What's this wood here? Yeah, this is a bag of, bag of firewood. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let, let, let's talk a little bit about um, what they were showing with the Swift and the spin. Yeah. Well, you are into the spin. I'm into the spin. I'm into the I mean, spin. We have, we've already talked about the concept of the convertible, right? Yeah. You want to flip away your work. Okay, I want to flip that. away my work. Let's, yeah. no, let, no, let's just ditch that. No. Let's go back to the Swift 7, yeah. which is now the thinnest laptop the thinnest in the world. The thinnest laptop in the world. Is this still a thing? Or is this just, you know, just to show up marketing and design wise? I think it's marketing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like. I mean, it's a gorgeous device. So I, I oh. had to. So. Um, Sasha and I do a lot of bits for, for Associated Press, and Yona was basically just like, I, I want you to talk about thin, right? It's a thing, right? It's a thing. I was just like, you want me to say thin is the new black, don't you? He's like, that's a great <laughs> sound. <Yeah. laughs> but thin is the thing this show. It's like, oh, we're going to be this thin. This is how thin we... The yoga book definitely demonstrated that thin like, and beautiful design it can be it really gorgeous. achieved. Like this really does look like the future. Their attention to detail. But to be honest, the 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 Swift Seven, though it's thin, and I like the two USB Type C ports, this bezel killed me. Mm. Like this, he, like you know, like everything about that 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 notebook is beautifully designed. Mm. Right, like the the edges were well thought out, mm. the tapering, like everything is really, really good. And then they go and they put these one inch bezels mm. around the entire thing. Dell killed this market. It's over. Samsung, LG, they're all making really nice thin bezels. Yeah. Asus is still a little on the thick side, but everyone not else. Not on is the Zenbook. Not on the Zenbook. You're right. The Zenbook not on, three. on the Zenbook. But on their general laptop line, they're they're a little. little Actually, little. they have something special for the Zenbook three. Because um, I mean, most of the electronics are on the bottom of the panel. Mm. So they kind of moved half of it into underneath the keyboard, oh which really? was c c completely new. Ah. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Let's go back f to the yoga book for a second, mm. because um, I could play around with it for like five minutes or so. If they would have just gotten one of these ordinary Microsoft Surface keyboards on it, I would buy it immediately. I would buy it immediately as an ultra portable little blogging machine. How cool. No one's building these 10 inches anymore. No. That would be amazing. So the reason, so I, I agree with you, something, something little to type yeah. on. I like that. But <laughs> the reason why I really like the yoga book is not because this product is good or is gonna sell. Because conceptually, the yoga book actually defines a new product category, or it's the first and maybe what I could consider How to be. How is this category called? I don't know yet. <laughs> the future, <laughs> the future of productivity. <laughs> I'm not really sure, but the thing, the thing that makes me kind of excited about it is this pen, like stylus thing. Mm -hmm. I hate like on my Surface Book. Would you use it? No, no. So the stylus is in the box, so I don't lose it. I'm not a stylus user. Well, yeah. Literally, on the Surface Book, I never use Isn't my stylus. Isn't there a magnet on the side? There is, but I, you know mm. what I mean? Like, I don't use a stylus, but I do use pen and paper, right? I do write. And he's going to sneeze again. He's going to sneeze again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whenever I think about it, I can. Hilarious. But the fact that you can put the paper oh. on top of the touchpad, write on it, and then it transcribes up, mm. that's really, really smart. But what everyone didn't realize is that you can't write and it's not transcribing it. Mm. Right? So you'd have to go to the Android version where there's a couple of apps that would actually transcribe your handwriting. But this is generally not that useful. Right? Like this has been available for a really long time. Almost no one's actually doing it. Yeah. But for me, what I like about it, as, as, as a journalist, right, if I have my, my laptop and I'm interviewing you, yeah. right, or I have a pen and paper, I can maintain eye contact with you when I'm writing. 
yeah. right? And it's really less obtrusive to like our conversation, right? So you can get like a little more into it. Whereas if I'm typing, it's like clack, 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 clack. And they're a lot more aware of the fact that I'm writing down what they're saying. I just put the record button on my smartphone and put the laptop away and I can give you the whole immersive eye contact attention. I'm just giving you the whole. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's even even more mobile and makes more sense. Yeah, but sometimes, <laughs> no, sometimes people d aren't as open when they know they're being voice recorded. Sometimes. I don't think so. I think so. I don't sometimes. think so. So anyways, this is actually just a rather... about you to, to answer the right questions. So this is, this is a rather niche scenario for like, I'd say like students and journalists and th this type of thing. But let's actually go back to, because I really want to get your opinion on the Predator 21X, right? So that's that big... The curved, curved gaming laptop. I, it, it's just another. <sighs> it's a show floor demo, tech demo thing. That's. And they would sell probably. I would guess. A thousand. <laughs> Ten units a month. So, what. What I want to talk about isn't necessarily that they've made a big curved laptop, but that, that they've included Toby's eye tracking inside. Yeah. Right? So this is the thing. Like, forget I mean, that's the, pretty cool. Forget the curved thing. Forget the two 1080 graphics cards inside, the eight pipe cool, all of this, right? But the fact that for first-person shooters, right now, like, and so I, I played. I, I have, I, I have do, the video. Do we have a video of the video. Yeah, yeah, we, we do. We no, no, but let, let's, okay. let's talk about this before we show it, though. Mm -hmm. So do you think that it's cheating, right, in first-person shooter to look and, and kill? Right, so in general, first-person shooter, you have to use your mouse and the keyboard it's to like to like to like scroll around yeah. and like move through the game I or like the joysticks. The, I, I think it's a matter of the latency of the Toby hardware and software. It's good. I'm it's really doubting good. that it. It's first-person shooter good. Yeah, I'm doubting that. I'm really. But doubting if you can that. look and click. Look yeah, and that click, will be look amazing. And click, look and click. Let's, we should check right. it out. Let's, let, let, let's, let's, head, let's head over to the Acer booth again and take a look at the very, very first gaming laptop. Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks here at the Acer booth during IFA. It is day one, and I had to come and check out this Acer 21X. On the press days, the display wasn't on, and I was not down for covering something that I could not see. This display looks amazing. We have eye tracking up here. There are two GTX 1080 graphics cards inside, five heat pipes, or is it eight heat pipes? Eight heat pipes, five fans. We have a number pad on this side that actually flips around and turns into a touch pad. Right, this thing is eight kilos of holy shit madness. There's even a window up here where you can see the fan. Hold on, let me lift up these eight kilos so you can look at it more easily. It's so crazy. Wow, look at that fan go. Wow, this is unbelievable. So, the eye tracking is in here. It's by Toby, which is a very familiar company. For all of us, obviously, it has its latest 7 Gen Core. I think it's 64 gigabytes of RAM. The keyboard changes colors. What's going on with this madness? Anyways, and oh, there's even lighting over here on the trackpad. <laughs> Goodness gracious. So my thing is, I wanted to see how this bad boy closed because it's a curved display. It closes. So now if I shift it over here, you can see, oh, you can see that there's a definite curve to this display. So I think it's 2160 or 80 by 1080, right? So when you're gaming on it and you open it up, ugh, God, it feels very substantial. I don't know what I just did there. Let's close this. All right, experience eye tracking. Oh, here we go. So we're gonna experience a little bit of eye tracking. But the one thing that I was, oh, look at each dot until it explodes. All right. I'm doing it. Look at those dots explode. Okay. So extend my view. Use your eyes to see outside the box. Is there going to be a box or I just look around? Okay. Now, okay, I, I am spinning the view by looking around. I feel like I'm making a really weird face. I'm glad that you're looking at the display and not my face. Now I can look up and down. It works. It actually works. I'm looking around. 
So I can definitely see the advantage to having eye tracking in gaming. If you want to look somewhere that you're shooting, this makes absolute sense. If you're playing a first person shooter, it's actually faster for you to look at your target than it is to like move the mouse around and maybe click. So anyways, I know there's a massive lineup like actually around the corner for this, but let me just take a look at the ports on the side here. Look at these big fans. We have high-end audio jacks, full-size SD card, um, two USB 3.0s, obviously. It's really heavy, and then around this side, give this a little spin for you again, more USBs, Kensington Lock, because you don't want anyone to run away with this. Now, I have to, you have to get a quick look into the back there, Daniel. Look at these really big fans. We have massive display ports, full-size Ethernet, a USB, that's probably a Thunderbolt port right there. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm sure that that's probably what that is on a machine like this. So we're looking at release next year, and it's going to cost you $5,000. I think they should take my money. Apparently, I have $5,000 for a curved display gaming laptop. Nicole Scott here for Mobile Geeks, feeling really stressed because everyone wants their hands on time with this device. Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you see why we had to have a solo video where you had to watch that through, right? So what was your favorite part? Um, I was wondering <laughs> why they don't have a, a, a press release saying, we, also, we not only have the thinnest laptop in the world, we also have the thickest and heaviest <laughs> one, right? Eight kilos. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, as I said, you know, could, could you imagine sitting at a Starbucks having like a, a carry-on with um, some electric engine to support it, right? So otherwise you would have a hard time to just drag it behind you. And then mm. getting this m massive, putting it on Taylor, poof. <laughs> and getting then, this 21 <laughs> inch screen out. <laughs> and then opening up Facebook and playing a Facebook game. <laughs> <laughs> and playing Farmville. Playing Farmville. <laughs> With notepad on the side. I, you know what? Actually, <laughs> I'm, I'm beginning to love this device. <laughs> it's unapologetic. Mechanical keyboard, that trackpad, is or, trackpad or number pad. Right? All wow. like really, like, really nice so LED lights. I so much fun out of it. Now that I saw it, it's the same like with, the, with this Acer, uh, uh, with the Yasus ROG, uh, with the liquid cooling. That is also one of these massive devices and, and, and for, for like 5,000 bucks or so. And actually it comes with a carry-on. It comes with its own little suitcase. Does it? Yeah. I've never the, actually the seen, one. I've never yeah, seen yeah, the suitcase. Yeah, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's all with oh. like foam in there, right? Oh. Just perfect. Absolutely perfect. It, 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 it looks like, a, a, you know, one of these, one of these um, suitcases and cases for a hitman, for, for his oh. gun. Yeah, yeah, so like, so yeah. when you're playing Counter-Strike, you can like look like you're about to kill someone for real? But this Acer one is just putting it on a whole new level. With oh, the, new the level. keyboard is just that's insane, all the I.O. ports and whatnot. The back of it, it's like. Rah, rah, Jesus. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> I've never ever seen anything like this before. So you think the I, I okay? I felt ridiculous. I was like, let me look, and I felt like I had to make like strange faces to like look around. But when I watched people play Counter Strike on it, and like literally, they were there for 15 minutes. Like someone from the booth had to tell them to like get off because there was a massive line. Yeah. There was just a massive line, and all these journalists wanted to take photos, and this guy is just like playing Counter Strike. And he's like all in, right? And it seemed like it was like maybe he was cheating. I don't know, but you're right. Toby cameras have been around for quite a long time. It's, and it's not fast enough the to do the, that. Do you think the latency is too slow? Mm. Otherwise, they would already use that. Yeah, of course. Mm. I would cheat all the way through. If that would work... Yeah, <laughs> I would probably start playing Center State if I could just look and kill. <laughs> it's not going to work. Hey, Nicole. Mm. Actually, hey, Sasha. That, that, was, that, was, that was a long intro that we had over here. Um, so we have a break of about five minutes right now. And then comes uh, John Chow. Mm. And uh, he's from Zero Tech and Dobby and he's a vice president of R&D. And then we're going to talk about this forward like 20 minutes or so and I'm going to see you again oh you oh. are here at uh, at 3.30 mm -hmm. you're going to interview our DJ of the booth <laughs> you can hear him now Placidus and um, then we're going to do our 
Do you want to do a Vlad? And I'm doing Jaime and Juan sure. Carlos. Let's do that. We could both do Vlad, actually. Yeah, we could both hey. do Vlad. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So we're going to see you uh, in the afternoon. Um, thank you so much for joining us here. Not a problem. For these amazing booth tours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, some we, we saw some flashy devices for the ones that want to get noticed. Uh, especially, uh, could you imagine a combi you're just having a combination of the Honor 8 and the new Ace of Predator? <laughs> oh, Paul, seriously, you are in the, in the spotlight everywhere. Everybody's looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite interesting, seriously. So um, we're going to have a quick break of some five minutes, show you some videos, and then we're going to be back at 11. See you then.